Hello again, everybody. Welcome to Ham Cured Smoke. I'm Tom, WA2IVD, and this is the fourth episode in a series called the ICOM 7300 from A to Z. Today we're going to finish up section three of the manual. We're going to start in section 310. And the first thing we're going to look at is the RF gain and the squelch control knob, which uh, is the outer knob here on uh, the left side on the 7300. Uh, traditionally, RF gain and squelch have been two separate knobs, but on a lot of compact modern radios, they combine them into a single knob to save a little bit of panel space. Uh, trying to cram in all the different uh, buttons and functions. Uh, and actually, I really like the way ICOM uh, implements this because you get both the RF gain and the squelch in a way that, to me, makes sense and works the way uh, I think you'd like it to. So right now I have the squelch turned all the way up on the right half of the knob or the, the right half of the rotating range the knob acts as a squelch control. This is in the default mode from the factory. I'll show you how to change those settings in a few minutes. And with it all the way closed, if you look on the display, you see a little tiny white arrow at the top of the S meter. That's actually showing you what the squelch is set to. So the squelch operates in two modes. It works in a signal strength mode, and as I turn it down, when I get down to where the noise floor is, or where the voice is, let me turn that down for right now. This controls where the squelch opens and you can see the receive light open when I get below where the current signal strength is. Once you get down to S0, the little arrow goes away and you have a small range here where the squelch operates as what's called a noise squelch. Um, and that's primarily for uh, FM and AM operation, and we can demonstrate that real quickly. We'll, we'll go up to six meters here in FM, and I can close the squelch till the noise goes away, but I'm not actually into the S meter yet. So that's the, the noise part of it. And let me go back to 20 meters here. And we'll turn the volume down. If I continue turning the knob to the left, now we get into the RF gain portion, and you'll see a little RFG just showed up uh, on the display here. Now I'm starting to reduce the RF gain. And in some radios, it actually moves the meter up to show you like how loud, how strong something would have to be to... To hear it on the 7300, it doesn't change the meter at all. But let's, uh, I think that guy just signed. Let's find a signal here. Um, uh, somebody. That's a pretty weak signal. Let me see if we can find a little better one here. So if I turn the RF gain down, you'll hear it getting softer. And when I get all the way to minimum, there's basically the, the no signal is going to get through. So you just have the noise floor. And my noise floor is now at zero. And we can turn it back up. And, of course, he stopped talking. So we'll turn the volume off for the moment. So this is the way the uh, RF gain to the left and squelch to the right. This is the way it works default from the factory. Now, there are some options. If we press Menu and we press Set, and then we go to the Function menu, this is, and I'll go to the top screen here, it's on the second page down, uh, RF squelch, uh, RF slash squelch control. And if we press that, RF plus squelch is the mode that it comes preset to. So you have squelch and RF gain. The next option is just squelch. And in this mode, we'll 
go out really quick. Okay. It's only squelch, and it all the way to the left doesn't do anything. So it's only acting as a squelch control and nothing else. And when you set it to that option, the RF gain is just fixed at maximum all the time. And then the one other option they give you is auto. And in the auto mode, it operates just as RF gain. So all the way up, its gain is all the way up. And then as I turn it down, the RF gain comes up. So in this mode, it's only RF gain if you are in sideband or CW uh, or RIDI. And if you are in AM and FM modes, it acts only as a squelch control. So it automatically switches modes depending on what mode you're in. Uh, personally, I like the default mode of both RF and squelch where... Um, you can because if I'm if I need to squelch the signal, I probably want the RF gain all the way up, and if I need RF gain reduced, I probably want the squelch open. So for me, I like it in the default mode. That's uh, the RF gain can end squelch control. Let's look at the rest of the functions on the last few pages here. The next thing they show is dial lock, which is this button down here near the bottom, and it says speech, and it has a little picture of a key on it. And if you are listening to, let's say you're on a net or some fixed frequency you go to for a schedule every week or every day, it's pretty easy to just, you know, if you're moving your hand around, to tap the knob and move your frequency quite a bit um, on the dial here. And uh, if you want to make sure you don't accidentally change frequencies, you just press and hold the button with the key and that turns on the dial lock and now with the dial lock on you can't change frequencies. All the other functions, you know, volume, um, the everything else is not locked, it's only the dial for changing frequencies. And then if you press and hold it again, it unlocks it. So pretty simple for that one. And then the next thing they show is basic transmission, which um, Pretty straightforward. If you're doing sideband, you press the mic, but if you are uh, running CW or maybe if you're running data modes without a computer, there is a transmit button on the left side of the display, and it operates as a toggle. You press it, it goes into transmit mode. Press it again, it goes out of transmit mode. So pretty simple for that as well. And then next is adjusting the RF power. Now, I haven't done much with this multi button other than show you that you can use it for changing some of the parameters and the menu functions. So if you press the multi button you get a little mini window here that shows up with some options. The top one is RF power and it's pretty intuitive. You just touch whichever parameter you want to change. So RF power you touch it and you can use the multi button to change your power from anywhere from zero to a hundred percent and it's in percent so for example uh, you have a hundred watts sideband so that's zero to a hundred watts in AM uh, the 7300 will only do 40 watts so a hundred percent would be 40 watts and uh, I showed you in some of the menus that you can use either the multi or the dial well for this function, the dial actually still just changes the frequency, so the only way to change power is to use the multi-button up and down. So that covers transmitting and uh, RF power. Now the next thing, and I'm going to go a little out of order here, the next thing in the manual they show you is the meter. We'll get to that in a minute. The other one they show you is adjusting your mic gain, and again that operates the same way, but they give you some instruction on setting your mic gain and um, I guess maybe it would have been useful to go to the meter first, but I'm going to put the meter in ALC mode, and I don't believe I'm going to get any indication on it because I've got my power set to zero, but we'll try. WA2IVD test. Oh, I guess even with power set to zero, it still manipulates the ALC. So ALC is the automated limiter control, automatic limiter control, and the manual 
suggests that you adjust your mic gain so that when you're talking, your voice peaks. Testing, one, two, three, four, hello, um, should be between 30 and 50 percent on the meter. And if you do much more than that, your voice is going to be distorted. And if you do much less than that, you're not going to have uh, peak power when you're transmitting. I try to keep it kind of on the lower side. I, I tend to keep it a little between a quarter and 30 percent myself, but the manual suggests 30 to 50 percent for peaks. Um, and again, you would just adjust that here as you're talking into the microphone. And then finally, we'll take a look at the meter. And I'm going to, if you press the menu button, I'm going to press that and press meter. I now get all the meters at once. So the top meter is your signal strength, and then it is power when I'm in transmit mode. And then you have your ALC meter. The next meter is compression, which is how much compression is being done if you have that turned on. We'll get to that later. SWR for your transmit to show you how your antenna is doing or your tuner. And then ID, which is current. Uh, ID stands for drain current, actually. And this is a solid state radio, so the output finals are FETs, F-E-T transistors. And the, uh, the two sides, the two input and output sides of those transistors are labeled drain and source. So this shows you how much current is going into the final transistors. And then you have two mini meters over here, which is your input voltage from 10 to 16 volts. So it should be, you know, just above middle if your power supply is at 13.8. And then, of course, your temperature. And hopefully most of the time it stays in the cool. If you're doing a lot of high duty cycle transmitting or you're maybe outside in the summer for field day this may get up more toward the hot and the radio will automatically reduce power if it gets into this red zone to protect the finals so the other way you can use the meter is if I just tap this briefly it turns off all the other meter meters and then for example I can put the scope back on if I tap the meter and you saw me do this earlier each time you tap it, it goes to a different parameter uh, for transmit. Receive, it's always signal strength, and then it shows you on the bottom label what it will be when you're transmitting. So you can scroll through those. Now, the one, the, the two that you can't get on the main meter is the input voltage and the temperature. The only way you can get that is to turn on all the meters which you've seen me do through the menu. The other way that you can do that is if you press and hold the meter, it will bring up all the meters. So that's pretty much with uh, that's pretty much it with the meter and adjusting microphone gain. And that brings us to the last page of section three, which talks about the five megahertz or sixty meter band. It really doesn't give you anything on the radio other than suggesting that you put them into memory. Um, some other radios, Yezu, for example, has the 60 meter band frequencies preset into fixed memory channels that you can't change. Uh, ICOM has taken a different approach, and they tell you what the frequencies are for the five fixed channels that were allowed on 60 meters. And they tell you the frequency that you want to put on the display for sideband versus what the FCC center channel is. Um, because on sideband, yours, the center of your transmission is offset from the carrier frequency. So they show you that for sideband, and then they show you for CW mode the frequency you need to set, which is the same as the channel frequency. When we start working on memory channels, we will use these as probably the first things that we'll program into a memory channel because uh, they'll make a nice example for setting those into memory. So that's the end of Section 3. Next time, we will take a look at Section 4 and move on through the rest of the manual. I'm Tom, WA2IVD, and thanks for watching Ham Cured Smoke.